Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here and welcome back to the railway. Today I'm looking at one of Backman's newest steam locomotives. <music> A little while ago I got an email from Backman USA which was quite a surprise and they said they have seen some of my reviews but they've noticed that I review a lot of Backman's slightly older models which is fair to say because I buy them on special when they're cheaper but that does mean that they're not necessarily representative of Backman's newer models. So they actually offered to send me some so that I could review them. Now I said to them basically, you know, that's very kind, thank you very much, but no thank you because I prefer to buy models myself because then nobody can say that I've been influenced or something. However, I did say to them, if you'd like to suggest some models to me, some newer models that you think I would like better than some of the older ones, then I will buy some of them and do reviews on them. And one of the models that they suggested was this. It's a pretty new release from Backman and it is the New York Central Hudson, complete with DCC sound. So presumably this represents the standard of Backman's latest output. And this is quite an expensive model. The ROP is $479, which is about 380 Great British Pounds. However, I bought this from Trainworld at quite a discount at $284.99, which is only about £225. Now, I think for a large new tooled locomotive like this, complete with DCC sound and looking at the box, a lot of other features, that doesn't seem too bad. Obviously, there are lots of caveats there. If the quality's not great and the mechanism's not built to last, then yeah, maybe that's too expensive. But from a glance, that seems to be really decent value. And let me tell you, this box is incredibly heavy and there doesn't seem to be much to the packaging. So it is the loco that's responsible for that weight. So yeah, it seems very heavy, hoping that this will be a good quality one. So anyway, thank you so much, Backman, for getting in touch. Thank you for suggesting this. I'm going to give it a try, see if it is better than some of the older stuff. And if any other manufacturers would like to get in touch with suggestions or feedback, Obviously, you're very welcome to. But for now, let's take a look at the New York Central Hudson. Very excited. Let's give it a look. So, new packaging. Never seen a loco in this style of box before. And it looks good, nice and modern. Although, I have to say, the quality of the packaging here is quite poor. It's missing that sturdy cardboard box that the models I usually review come in. And there doesn't seem to be any sort of foam to cushion the loco at all. It really just seems to be in a clamshell in a box. Now, given the weight of this loco, I would have said the packaging needed to be a bit better. And in fact, there's a wound here in the front window where the loco's kind of smashed against it. So I'm hoping that this loco is gonna be okay. Obviously, it's had to travel all the way from America to England in this box. So yeah, something a bit sturdier would have been better. I mean, if you remember back to my River Rossi Big Boy video, that's what you call decent packaging for a heavy loco. But anyway, let me show you the end of the box. So the model I've got here is item number 53603. It is an HO scale Hudson 464, interesting wheel configuration, steam locomotive with TCS wow sound equipped. Never tried a TCS decoder before, to my knowledge, so that should be interesting. And it is in the New York Central livery and it's number 5432, which is a pleasing number sequence. Anyway, if I show you the back of the box, there's some specs on the sound decoder here. So it says there's true CD quality audio with 16 bit, 44,000 Hertz, etc. Obviously this will only sound as good as the speaker that's fitted or speakers. So we'll have to see load based chuff intensity. That sounds pretty cool. So we should get a bit more than just that monotonous chuffing sound that just plays faster when you speed the loco up. It's got keep alive or stay alive as we call it. Yeah, so that's great. That should mean that it shouldn't cut out on points and stuff. Really, really good. Voice guided audio assist programming tool for easy setup of decoder functionality. Never experienced anything like that before. So that's gonna be interesting. And then dual mode. So yeah, you can run it on analog or DCC. I'm gonna run this on DCC, I think. Probably get better functionality out of it. Anyway, let's open this up and let's take my first look. A very, very heavy loco. I'm actually interested to know whether this is diecast or mostly diecast. Based on the weight, it feels like it could be. Let's have a look at the documentation we get. 
So there's a quick start guide here. So I guess we'll look at that to start with. All right, DCC sound on board with the TCS decoder. So this seems a lot more complex than Backman's sound value decoders. You've got button actuated braking, which I don't think I've had before on a Backman logo, extended momentum, etc. Lots of different speed step modes supported, lighting and different controls, two watt amplifier for powerful sound in a small package. All right, so hopefully this will sound pretty decent. Apparently, if I press button eight four times rapidly, that will enter audio assist. Audio assist will then guide you through configuring a wide array of features. That sounds awesome. Might have to look into that. And then do we have a list of functions? Yeah, we do. So here's the one for the Hudson. So we've got generator sound, directional headlights, bell, whistle, blow down, cylinder cocks, water fill, and a headlight dimming feature. So that seems pretty standard. I think really, I just want to get this on the track, hear what it sounds like, see how it performs. I think that will be the most telling, really. Anyway, HO464 Hudson Steam Locomotive. Let's look at this. So smoke unit, uh, well, I don't think the outer box said anything about a smoke unit, so probably not. Break-in period, that's fine. Lubrication and maintenance, that's all gonna be standard. Here we go, exploded diagram. First one for the boiler assembly, it says, which I guess is the body. Yeah, you can see there's lots of different detail parts on there and the body itself looks very, very detailed. Can't wait to see that. And then we've got the chassis assembly. Let's see what the quality is like there. So we've got a large looking motor with a flywheel, which is good. I uh, can't see whether we've got proper bearings on the driving axles, although I would hope so. And it does appear to have standard wiper pickups as well, so that's good. And then we've got the tender assembly. There's the chassis speaker and the tender by the looks of it. And then we've got the wheels, which do have pickups on them as well. And then on the other side, on the right, we've got the tender body assembly, which looks to be fairly basic, but again, seems to have some decent molded details. All right, what's this? Oh, this looks interesting. What a color scheme. A full color combined William and Backman's catalog over 300 pages, digest size as well. Well, do you know what? Since this is a new loco, I might be able to actually cash in on this and uh, get that sent to me. So I'm not going to tear that up this time and uh, we'll maybe send off for that. Oh, actually, I've just remembered something. I would not like a full color combined Backman and Williams catalog, regardless of it's over 300 pages or not. And so I think I am going to tear it up because I really just don't want that. Not because I'm aggressive or anything like that. But I just would really rather reduce the chances of me receiving the 300-page Backman and Williams catalogue to zero. So I think that is job done. Anyway, let's move on and look at the loco. Do we get any accessories with this one? Yes, well, I think I was wrong to use the plural there. It looks like there is an accessory in a bag. So let's pull that out and have a look at that first. <laughs> What's that? It looks like a dummy knuckle coupler, if you ask me, and uh, not a particularly convincing one either. But uh, I think we'll leave that in the pack. I don't think we'll be missing out on much by not fitting that. But anyway, let's reveal the Loco, see what it's like. Yeah, very flimsy packaging for such a big, heavy thing. Whoa. Okay, that finish is awesome. That looks like real metal. If I had to guess, this is probably gonna be die cast. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. Awesome. Yeah, for 225 quid and sound, this is looking pretty great. Yeah, full die-cast boiler there. Cab seems to be plastic, but that's okay. Is the loco connected? Yeah, there's a wire going between them, although the drawbars become undone. Uh, so if I gently lift this up, yeah, that is heavy, dude. Wow. There is quite some weight to this loco, and that's for sure. Yeah, die-cast boiler, my scales are going to cry when I put this on them. That weighs a lot. And do you know what? What a difference that makes. This was quite expensive, but already the features promise sound amazing. And the moment I grabbed this in my hands, it felt like a heavy quality model, which is exactly what you want. So from a value perspective, I don't have a problem with this. Yeah, this seems to be absolutely awesome. Anyway, we'll take a much closer look at this loco and its details in just a second. But for now, here's a bit of background on the New York Central Hudsons in real life. 
the New York Central Hudson was a large class of steam locomotives built between 1927 and 1938, with 275 being built in total. They were intended for high-speed passenger work and as such they were excellent at high speed with an incredible top speed really of 123 miles per hour. Having said that, their performance wasn't so great at slower speeds, so these really were cut out for going quick. They were huge locomotives designed to replace and improve on older locos such as the numerous Pacifics. The extra wheels of the Hudson's 464 configuration were to better distribute the weight, allowing for a larger boiler and more importantly a huge firebox. This huge firebox was key to ensuring the engines never ran out of power at speed. The New York Central Hudsons were split into three batches, the J1, the J2 and the J3. This model represents the latter, which were built between 1937 and 1938. Like so many steam locomotives, their fate came about because of the dieselization of the railroads. These Hudsons were quickly scrapped and by 1957 all were gone with no survivors. So there it is up close and personal for you, the frankly amazing New York Central Hudson by Backman. And with its basically all metal body, this thing is truly impressive. Yeah, it's only really the cab that is not metal here. The boiler, the smoke box, the running plate, all die cast, and as a result, this loco is monstrous. And I don't say monstrous lightly, this weighs in at 730 grams. That is heavier than a Helgen Garrett, it's even heavier than most of the diesels in my collection. Truly very heavy indeed. In fact, it's 141 grams more than the Hornby Turbo Motive, which was the last all-metal loco I looked at. And the crazy thing is, the Turbo Motive actually cost me £15 more than this Hudson did, and that loco didn't even have sound. This thing is 140 grams heavier, so that's the weight of a tank engine, and it's got DCC sound, and it's much larger. So by comparison, this makes Hornby look like a complete rip-off merchant, doesn't it? So like I say, the quality of the loco because of the die-cast construction is high, but the quality of the packaging is poor. And you can see this area of the running plate here, this is behind where that mark on the outer box was, and you can see there is a mark on the running plate and it's also warped a little bit where it's had a knock. It's also got this glazing piece missing as well. I've checked inside the box for that and can't find it, so don't know what's happened to that. So I would say that the packaging is completely inadequate. I don't think this damage would have occurred if it was packaged in a sturdy cardboard box with some foam around the clamshell. I think this is a tremendous model with some good quality features to it. I think it deserves better packaging so that it stands a better chance of arriving with the customer in good condition. And the loco is sturdy enough, most of the detail seems to be well applied, but there are some parts like this pipework at the bottom which seem a little bit flimsy. You've got to be quite careful not to catch those when you pick up the loco. And this wiring over on the other side at the back here in front of the cab, it's not actually connected to anything. So it doesn't look that great. And again, you've got to be very careful not to catch it. Otherwise though, the quality of this seems to be really good. So let's talk about the decoration and the finish to start with. The die cast body has given this an incredible shiny metallic finish. Looks really, really good. In fact, the finish of the tender doesn't quite match because the body of that is plastic and it doesn't shine as much as the metal does. So I guess that's a slight downside, but it's not too noticeable. The printed detail is relatively basic on this. You've got the number on the side of the cab, which is nicely printed. And you've also got some detail around the front lamp, as you can see, which has been printed. This little plate on the bottom looks very fragile. You've got to be really careful not to catch that, but there's some good printing on that too. And of course, the smoke box has been painted into a separate colour. This is still made of metal. Um, it's not plastic or anything, but uh, yeah, painted into the grey sort of colour. And then there's just a handful of separately painted components. You've got the firebox, which seems to be in a slightly lighter colour. And then you've got the components such as the bell, just a plastic bell, unfortunately, although that has been painted relatively nicely. And then there's this over on the other side. Maybe these are the whistles, not too sure, possibly. And those are separately fitted and separately painted. 
And speaking of separately fitted parts, unlike a lot of Backman's Locos that I've looked at to date, this one relies a lot on separate parts. So we've got the wire handrails across the boiler. These seem to be good quality, but we've also got various pipework and wiring going across the boiler too. Most of this is separately fitted. Look at this here. This is a very complex separately fitted part and it stands out as a result a lot more than it would if it was just a part of the molding. Some of the pipework is just a part of the molding, but I think the mixture of that and the actually separately fitted stuff is a really good combination, I like that. And there's all sorts of different components here. We've got the little power generator here, presumably for the lamps, other components fitted to the top of the boiler, and across the running plate, we've got this tank here, all sorts of different pipe work. It is a really complex loco, which I like a lot. The wheels are cast by the looks of it, and they've got the axles blackened. Same with the bogey wheels, although one of them doesn't. So you've got the one at the front here with the shiny axle, one at the back here, which has had it blackened. So maybe that's a little bit of a discrepancy, isn't it? Around the front, we've got a detailed pilot and cow catcher area. We've got the separately fitted movable uncoupler, which is a nice touch. And there's also the pre-fitted knuckle coupler, which is in the sort of KD style. Here's the lamp on the front, and according to the instructions, this does have working lighting, so hopefully I'll see that in action pretty soon. And there's also the separately fitted metal handrail on the smoke box as well. Looking across the body, you can see we've got some decent moulded detail on here, particularly on the smoke box. To say this is die cast, the quality and the sharpness of the moulding here looks absolutely fine. We've got separate glazing around the cab, as you can see, which is done nicely, except for that piece that's broken off, but I would say that's more of a packaging thing than a quality thing. And inside the cab, we have got some detail here, but none of it is painted, unfortunately, and I don't see any cab lighting either. I will verify that when this is on the track, but yeah, from first glance, it's just a very, very basic cab, which perhaps could have been better, I think, given how expensive this is. Let's take a look at the tender then, which is a plastic tender and it's quite a bit lighter, although this is where the speaker and the DCC decoder is. Like I say, the finish on the body not quite as great, but the lettering here is perfectly fine. I think they call this the Gothic lettering, don't they? And it is very, very well printed. You've got detailed bogies. These are six wheel bogies and there's two of those. There's some axle box detail here, as you can see, although the brakes really don't look very good. They're nowhere near touching the wheels, so on closer inspection, yeah, perhaps not that realistic. And there's even a water scoop down on the bottom here. Obviously, these are high-speed locos, probably doing express services, so picking up water on the run is going to be an absolute must for this. It does have some metal handrails on it, which seem to be nicely fitted, and a very, very large coal load. Yeah, these locos were supposed to go long distance without stopping, so again, the size of this tender is absolutely necessary. Quite a few details around the back, separately fitted ladder and such, another one of those moving uncouplers, I do like that feature. And then you've got another pivoting knuckle coupler on the back, uh, which I will test shortly. So if we deduct about £100 from this to account for the decoder and the sound system, we're left with a loco here that cost me about £125 approximately. I think given the relative complexity of the loco and the die-cast construction, that's really, really good. It's really impressive value, especially given the fact that I paid a relatively typical price for this. I didn't wait years for it to be discounted. This is still a pretty new loco, and if you go to Train World, you can still buy one today at that price. So very, very impressed with this. But I do want to look at the mechanism. I do obviously need to test this and see if it sounds good. They've made a lot of claims about the quality of the sound and the functionality. I really want to hear that for myself now and see if it's an improvement over some of Backman's sound value locos. So let's see what it runs like. Let's see what the quality is like inside as well as out. And then I'll give you my verdict. So let's get started. So there it is down onto the track, the excellent New York Central Hudson from Backman. And I've already filmed the initial performance test and I'll show you how that went in just a second. After that though, I took a look at the mechanism and I'm gonna cover that right now. So I was really enjoying this loco until I looked inside it. And I have to say I was really, really disappointed with what I found. 
I actually don't know how Backman can charge nearly $500, $479 at the full price for this, given the poor quality of the mechanism. I think for the price I paid, around $285, it's a bit more forgivable, but that's still a lot of money for what we're about to see. So let me show you what I'm talking about. First of all, pickups. This Loco does not have very many pickups. The tender wheels do have pickups, but it's done through the axles, and only two axles per bogey have pickups on them, and obviously each of those axles can only pick up from one wheel. So we've got four out of 12 of the tender wheels picking up. We've also got the loco driving wheels contributing, so that adds another six pickups, but that still means that only 10 of 26 wheels on the entire model have pickups on them. And that's assuming that they're all adjusted properly, which they are not. Look at this one. They're nowhere near touching the axles. The only factor that makes that a little bit more forgivable is that this has got a stay alive in it. And I'll show you the stay alive working in a little while. We've also got the old fashioned and insecure style of Backman drawbar, which is really easy to uncouple by mistake, which doesn't seem like a very good idea for such a heavy loco. Something a bit more secure would be better, I think. There's also this rat's nest of wires going between the loco and tender, which are very noticeable, and there's this huge connector as well. I think these days, looking at some of the much more subtle designs we've seen from the likes of Dapol and even Hornby, you'd expect better than this these days. It is quite a serviceable loco though, the base keeper plate is easy to remove, three screws and that is fully removable because it's got spring-loaded contacts, so you can clean those pickups quite easily. Here's the shocker though, no separate bearings on the driving axles, they sit directly into the chassis. And if I pull one of them out, you can see that they sit into square shaped slots. I'm absolutely gobsmacked by that. This is a 730 gram model, and almost all of that weight is sitting on tiny contact points on the chassis, which suggests that this model has not been built to last. I think given the weight of this loco, they should have been doing everything they could to reduce the drag in the mechanism, and this design kind of flies in the face of that. We have got a brass gear on the main driving axle though, although if I pull that out, the other gears are just plastic as usual, so it appears to only be that gear, and probably the worm drive as well, that is brass. So to remove the body was a little bit tricky. I did remove the front screw and that caused the cow catcher to come off. I don't know whether I was supposed to do that or not, but I did. So if you're struggling, do that as well. And then two screws at the back and the chassis came out relatively easily. It is a huge heavy chassis, as you can see, packed with weight, very heavy die cast, but it has this puny motor. This appears to be a relatively standard Backman motor. I'm sure I've seen this in other much lighter steam locomotives. And again, this is a 730 gram model. In order for it to perform at its best, it's gonna need a really, really chunky motor. This motor doesn't look that chunky given the weight of the model. It does have a flywheel fitted to it, although you can't really see that. That's underneath one of the circuit boards. And we do have an LED in the front of the chassis, which allows the lamp on the front of the smoke box to illuminate. And then finally, in terms of the gauge, it comes in at 14.4 millimeters back to back pretty reliably, which is bang on the standard more or less. So nothing wrong with that. So a relatively disappointing mechanism, really. I think given the price, it could have been a lot better. And when you spend $250 to $500 on a locomotive, you kind of expect it to last for life. And there are elements of this loco, not to mention the small motor, that suggest this has not been built to last for life. But anyway, let me show you the first performance test. Here it comes now. So at the moment I've got my controller unplugged because usually the sounds will start the moment the loco's got power. So I thought we'll do that on camera together and see what it sounds like for the first time. So if I can find my switch, let's power up the controller and see what happens. Here we go. Ah, there we go. We've got the sound of the loco idling there. It's quite quiet. It's nice and subtle actually. And maybe that's why it sounds so good because it's not distorting. Um, but yeah, that sounds really, really lovely, actually. Nice and understated, and yeah, the quality sounds great. Right, let me have a look at my list of functions then, and we'll start pushing some buttons. So, let's try the bell then. This should be a slightly louder sound, so here we go. Yeah, quality very, very good indeed. 
Uh, let's see what function naught is. That should be the generator. Yeah, just I like the subtlety of it. It's not going to blow you away, and maybe it's not going to fill a big hall or something, but yeah, the sound is quality. Uh, the whistle, long toot. Oh, it was a very long toot. Yeah, so that was a louder noise and it was distorting a little bit. Let's see if we can get that again. I'll move in so you can hear it. Yeah, that one uh, sounds like it's clipping a little bit. A uh, short toot. Yeah, a little bit of a distortion on that, yeah. Um, blow down. Yeah. Okay, stop. Stop! Stop! I think it's stopping. Maybe we have to wait for it to finish blowing. Uh, okay, cylinder drain cocks. Maybe that will only work when it's running. I don't know. And then water fill. Yeah, I heard the lid come off the cap. And now I can hear the water running. All right, very nice. And then we've got headlight options. Let me push that button. All right, so not only have we got the light coming on, which is a nice kind of warm white color, but we've also got accompanying that the sound of the generator turning on, which obviously is generating power for the lights. So that is super realistic. I love that. Although I think I will switch it off just so that we can hear the sound of the loco running on its own. So with that, let's give that a try. Um, I'll set this to 128 speed steps and let's give it some juice and see what it sounds like in motion. This is really cool. So this is its first run, I should say. I'm going to run this in completely before I sort of uh, assess the performance. Um, yeah, seems to be struggling a little bit. Let's turn it up a bit more. All right. Don't forget this is a seriously heavy loco, so it is going to take quite some mechanism to shift it at slow speeds. Anyway, let's try it in reverse. I'll push the direction button. Yeah. So that sounds like the reverser being wound. So yeah, I mean, the sound here is miles ahead of the sound value stuff. I mean, even without really running it that much, you can tell what a difference there is here. Uh, let's try it in reverse. Speed setting five. Yeah, it's just chuffing without moving anywhere. A bit more. Then it starts at about seven. Forwards. All right, so yeah, it seems to be smooth, but it doesn't seem to be doing so well at the slow speeds. So that begs the question, has this got any torque to it? So let me just gently put my fingers in front of the cow catcher here and turn it up, see what happens. Nah. No power to it whatsoever. Yeah, so, you know, that might improve with running in, but again, it's great making this thing die cast and weighing like more than basically any other loco I've ever tried. But if the mechanism can't shift it, then that's not good enough, is it? Anyway, let's see what it's like at speed. So let's go for about speed 50. Here we go. Yeah, and you get the impression that it's not just a monotonous chuffing sound played at higher speed. Yeah, it does sound like there's some real sort of weight to it. Yeah. So it's great. Speed matching sounds to be really, really good as far as I'm concerned. Right. So I'm going to run this in in just a second, but I think first of all, I'm going to press that function eight button see if I can get this to talk to me. Uh, I'm not interested in changing any of the CVs, but I am interested in hearing what it sounds like. So, four presses to enter audio assist. All right, function eight, here we go. Light, welcome to audio assist. <laughs> Use button one for sound programming options. Use button two for lighting control. Use mm -hmm. button three for calibrating chuff intensity 
chuck timing, and motor control options. Use button 4 for throttle modes, presets, resets, music, and decoder information. Use button 0 to exit audio assist. All right, well. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Gosh, so you've also got the experience of a cheap unmanned call center built into this Loco too. But no, that sounds really, really intuitive. If I wanted to change those settings, I'd now know exactly what I needed to do without even consulting the instructions. Very user friendly. Anyway, I don't want to change any of that. So let me just make sure the direction's set and let's run this in, see how it handles the track. I'll be interested to see if this slows down on curves. So let's set it for about 30, I reckon. So 30 seemed a little bit slow, so I've gone for 50 instead, which looks like maybe half speed. And yeah, it seemed to struggle a tiny bit on the second radius curve there, but it didn't slow down too much. And also the sound at this speed is quite pleasing. Again, it doesn't just sound like a simple sound effect that's been sped up and repeated many times to make it sound like the Loco's running faster. This sounds like a separate recording, a separate sound effect, and more importantly than that, it doesn't sound like a machine gun, like some of the cheaper sound fitted locos do. So much more convincing from a sound perspective. Yeah, a little bit more expensive than the sound value models, but the number of features added with this TCS chip, absolutely amazing. Really, really impressive. The quality's okay. Sometimes it does clip and distort a little bit with the louder whistle sounds, but those sound effects are pretty loud. They're just running and coasting like this. Yeah, this sounds okay. There's not too much distortion there at all. So yeah, audio quality good. Performance seems okay. It does seem a little bit underpowered, I think because of the weight of the Loco, but it still does need to be fully run in. So hopefully it will get better as it runs. I'll give this 30 minutes forwards, 30 minutes backwards, and then we'll come back and do some more testing. So looking good so far, staying on the track. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, folks, we are back. Let me stop it there, try and bring it back into shot. So yeah, that went absolutely fine. Um, it is not the smoothest runner in the world. It does seem to fluctuate quite a bit in speed on curves and such, and we'll talk more about that later on, but it is reliable, never derailing, never coming off the track, and never cutting out, which is good. So, has running in improved the performance? Before, this could not crawl. So let's see whether it can now. Let me make sure I'm still on 128 speed steps. And let's just hit it with speed setting one and see if it can move now uh, as it chuffs. Let's see. Yes, it can. Right, so that's good. That's good to see. It is now able to move at the slowest speeds and it wasn't before. Is there any torque there? Let me hold it. I doubt it. No, it stopped the wheels immediately. Uh, let's try it in reverse. Is it just as good in reverse? Yeah, so a pretty decent crawler, actually. I think given the weight of the Loco, that's really not too bad. Now, is the torque any better uh, if we try it a little bit faster? Let's go for about speed setting 10, shall we say? That's 10 forwards. Ah, that's interesting. So it stopped for a second and then it appeared to go again. Let's try again. Yeah, stops for a second, and then it recovers. So that's that's really interesting. It's almost as though the decoder maybe detects that, and then gives the motor a little bit of extra oomph, which speeds it up. And to be honest, I've noticed it doing that as it runs around the track as well. When it reaches the second radius curves, it sort of momentarily seems to struggle, and then it seems to get that extra boost and powers its way around the curve. So it does seem as though the motor is a bit underpowered, but the decoder is clever enough to overcome that by the looks of things in most situations. The other thing the decoder, or the supporting hardware, I guess, seems to be quite clever with is the stay alive capability. This Loco doesn't have that many pickups, and as we saw earlier, some of them aren't even touching the wheels and axles, yet it does not cut out. So I'm curious to see whether the stay alive is any good on this. So what I think I might do, and it's gonna be painful, but it should help to illustrate this, is I think I'm gonna put the long whistle on, <laughs> or the horn, whatever you wanna call it, and then cut out the power, 
I'll tell you when I do it, and we'll see how long the horn or whistle stays on before it cuts off. So let's give that a try now. Let's get this ruckus started. Uh, need the longer one, don't I? Here we go. Right, I'm going to cut it off in three, two, one, now. So, yeah, it lasted for about maybe half a second, something like that. Let's plug it back in and try the same thing with some movement. Uh, right, so let's back it up. We won't go fast, we'll go about setting a 10 again. And we'll see how long it can actually stay alive for while moving. Obviously that's going to be using more power, it's going to be drawing more current from the capacitor. So it shouldn't last as long. Ready? Is it in shot? Yep, yeah, so I'm going to cut it off in 3, 2, 1, now. Yeah, so it... I would say it probably lasted about as long there. Perhaps not quite a second, but I think a second is quite a long time when it comes to losing power, and it certainly seems to do the job. So if you keep what wheels it does have pickups on relatively clean, I don't think there's going to be much of an issue with that. Okay, there's one more thing I want to test, and that is the top speed. Obviously, in real life, these are very, very fast locos, and I'm curious to see whether this can actually do that kind of speed. Does it look like it's going at 123-odd miles per hour? Yeah, that seems like it would be quite scary. And also, what does it sound like when it's doing that? So I'm going to back it up, and then I'm going to hit it with full speed, and we'll see what it sounds like and what, what it looks like. You know, does it look like it's doing the real life top speed. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna stop it there then, and let's hit it, ready? No, 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 to me that did not look like well over 100 miles per hour. It's pretty fast, but I would say that that is quite a bit slower than you'd expect given the scale speed. All right, let's stop that. There we go, see if we can get that back in. It's also worth saying that at that speed, the sound really doesn't sound good. You get a lot of kind of rattling and vibrating and distortion from the speaker at the higher speeds or with the louder sounds, which is a bit confusing given that they claim this was CD quality audio. Uh, you know, the, the bit rate might be CD quality, but the speaker, yeah, it's not really capable of reproducing that quality at any sort of volume, at least. And I am using the default settings, and it said in the instructions this was all set up for the best possible results. So I trust that that's the case, and yeah, the speaker doesn't sound good. You could turn the volume down, I suppose, and then it would not distort quite so much, but with the standard settings, it doesn't sound great. So pulling power comes in at 0.8 newtons, which is obviously quite a lot. That should be about 45 coaches on straight and level track. However, this is a lot heavier than some other locos in my collection, yet some of those other locos can outperform this. The Garrett that I mentioned earlier, much more powerful than this, despite being lighter. So again, that motor, I think, could have been better. But anyway, to test the haulage, I know this is a passenger steam locomotive, but I don't have a decent rake of American passenger cars. So I've set up some box vans, which I realize is a bit sacrilegious, but it should at least allow us to see how this hauls a load around those curves. So with that, let's choose reverse. Yep, it's already in reverse. And let's see if we can shunt gently up to the wagons. So in real life, these locos really weren't that great at slow speed. But in model form, this one does seem to be, seems to be okay, but what's it gonna be like with a load? That's the big question, right. <laughs> well, you could see really, the moment it touched those wagons, it stopped dead. It wasn't able to push them back. Um, so yeah, maybe that answers the question. But let's see if it can do the same kind of thing with a load. So forwards direction, speed step one. Let's see if it's gonna move. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah, shifting all the wagons there, which is pretty good. Let's go up to speed step two. Yeah, it seems to be slower now, that's for sure, but that's okay, that's realistic, if anything. Yeah, it seems to be doing it. So let's go up to about 30. That should give it a reasonable chance of getting up Gordon's Hill and around the curves. There you go. So see which other American locos you can spot on the line. 
on the middle line I have got the American 440 that I looked at a little while ago and this has got some passenger coaches so if you're looking for your fill of those uh, hopefully this will satisfy you yeah not as good a sound system on there that really does sound machine gunny as it runs along but it is what it is and then on the inside line we've got a similar sort of loco I think this one's relatively recent as well this is the Baldwin 460 and this is similar because it's also got the die cast boiler and also not a very powerful mechanism to back it up except this one doesn't have a clever DCC decoder in it to make up for that and so the lack of torque is very real when you put your fingers against it it really does slow down or even stop at the slow speeds but anyway let's catch up with the Hudson see how that's getting on okay so very interested to see this take the curves with a load let's see if we can see it slow down and then sort of adjust for that yep you see it then started to struggle and then it noticeably picked up the pace so that's the decoder maybe it's a bit of feedback or something like that that's the decoder detecting that the motor's struggling and giving it a little bit of a boost and here on DCC that works great although I can almost guarantee if I tried this on my gauge master without that feature and without DCC it would really slow down on those curves because of that motor because of the drag in the mechanism and because of the the weight I guess of the loco and the train but I review locos as they are this one came with DCC it came with this pretty smart decoder and that does a pretty good job of masking the small motor in this thing so really I can't complain too much is it going to be putting the motor under a lot of strain well kind of but if the motor's running and it's not stalling and the decoder does a pretty good job of preventing that then it shouldn't be overheating so uh, yeah I don't really see what a problem that would cause and performance in other areas is pretty spot on really now that it's run in it's smooth it can go slow which is great and because it's pretty smart it does seem to have reasonable torque even if it does struggle for a second before kicking in on that higher mode so yeah it's absolutely fine i think the speed could have been a little bit better yeah it can't really do those top speeds and uh, certainly the sound doesn't sound very good when you do those high speeds as well but having said that it still can go reasonably fast and I think if it had a big rake of passenger coaches, it would still be quite an impressive display. But yeah, there you have it. Good looking loco, great range of features, not such a great mechanism, but with such a high quality decoder, I would say the price here is reasonably impressive, particularly the retailer price. Let's have some ratings then for the pretty new Backman Hudson locomotive. Level of detail I've given 4 star, there are some good details on this thing and in fact a lot of them are separately fitted and not just a part of the moulding. Finish is great as well, love the shiny metal finish of the boiler and the body, yeah that's fantastic. On the downside though it doesn't have a properly painted cab, no real detail in there. Some of the separate details like the pipes and wiring are clearly not connected to anything so they're not particularly realistic. And the bogies on the tender, the moulding there is quite unrealistic as well. So I think four star is about right, maybe that's a little bit generous, do let me know what you think. Performance, again I've given four star, now that it's run in the performance is way better than it was to start with. So it can crawl pretty well now, the sound is okay as well, and although it's not the most powerful loco in the world, the decoder does seem to compensate for the lack of torque and give the motor a bit of extra oomph which for the most part, if with a slight delay, does cure the issues in performance. However, the speed is not that realistic, it doesn't seem to be able to do that 123 miles per hour, and also at the higher speeds the distortion from the speaker is a little bit noticeable, so while it might be CD quality sound, it might have the same bit rate as that, the speaker included in this loco is certainly not the sort of speaker you'd be wanting to listen to CDs on. Yeah, not the greatest, but again, overall performance absolutely fine. Pulling power, 45 coaches or 0.8 newtons. Obviously, that is quite a lot, but it is a little bit weaker than other locos. Again, those locos tend to have more powerful motors. Mechanism is really where this loco falls down. Not great on mechanism. Very few wheels picking up. Some of the pickups not adjusted properly. 
No proper bearings on the driving wheels, despite the Loco's insane weight, not great. And it's a pretty small motor for the size of the Loco. And like I say, when you run it and test it, you can kind of tell that in the performance. So for those reasons, I've knocked it down to two star. The quality though is more sort of middle of the road. I've given it three and a half. The die cast metal construction is fantastic. The body is real quality and the build quality is not that bad either with a minimum of visible glue and certainly no hiccups in the decoration. However, the mechanism quality is not good. Can't give this a five with a mechanism like that. And the packaging really wasn't that great either. It failed essentially to properly protect the Loco. So if the mechanism and the packaging was better and the condition the Loco arrived in was better, yeah, it would be a five star on quality. It's clear that quite a bit of effort has been put into making this one good quality and the weight and everything is all great. So value for money then, I've given four star. The RRP of $479 is quite expensive, I would say, but the typical retailer price of about $285 is much more reasonable. Now, if I hadn't have found any issues with this, then that would have been a five. For such a heavy, detailed model, yeah, you couldn't fault the value. As it is though, there are one or two issues, slight quality problems, so it's not a bargain. I'm giving it four star though, you do get quite a lot for your money, and that sound decoder is really quite wonderful, love that. So overall that is 7.34 out of 10, or a grade of D. I think that seems a little bit harsh for what is a great looking model, but if it had a better quality mechanism, higher quality speaker, better packaging, then the grade would almost certainly have been higher. So into the logbook we go, it is 6th place right in the middle of the ranking here, above the Dapol B4 and below the Hornby Lord Nelson. Yeah, good loco, I can recommend it, certainly don't pay more than I did though, because I don't know how long this will last with a mechanism like this has got. Well folks, thank you so much for tuning in for yet another review. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one, and yes, noticeably this was a little bit better than some of the other Backman models that I've looked at, some of the older ones. Yeah, this has a lot more features, the build quality is noticeably better, although the quality of the mechanism, apart from the addition of the Stay Alive and the decoder included, yeah, really is unchanged, not much of an improvement over some of Backman's older stuff, so... I don't know how much it would have cost extra to put those bearings in and to have a larger, more powerful motor and to have more pickups and better adjust the pickups. But to my mind, for the money, that would have been worthwhile. But it's not too bad. You can't complain about the way it runs, that's for sure. And it looks fantastic. That metal body really gives it a gorgeous looking finish. So yeah, overall, I would say I'm pretty impressed. Don't pay too much for it, but otherwise, sure, I can recommend it. It's a great looking loco. So folks, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please do comment down below. Let me know what you think. Have I been too generous? Have I been too harsh? Do let me know. For now though, I'll say thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, cheers folks. You take care.